I'm feisty. You aren't going to intimidate me. You hit me with a two by four, I'll go find a crowbar and I'll hit you back. Damn, if that doesn't sound like Oklahoma. Turns out it was Bob Stoops, which is basically the same thing. Let me tell you what I mean. At Iowa, Stoops once hit Purdue wideout Mike Harris so hard, he broke that man's nose. It wasn't a dirty hit, just the one that fit. That's the way his teams played. His defenses put eight in the box, played bump and run on the outside, and put a single high safety in center field, who I swear was part pterodactyl. And Lord help you if you actually chose to put the ball in the air. I was raised in the era that chose violence, where Roy Williams' horse collar tackle was a signature move. Running across the middle was an act of valor, and targeting was what you got for running your mouth. And that was Stoops, a man who only took his fame visor off for a ball cap when it rained. He reinstituted what Lincoln Riley inherited and what Brent Venables demands, the standard. And the standard at Oklahoma is excellence. It was the standard he restored when he first took the job in December 1998. Before Stoops, OU had endured a half decade without a winning season. Before Stoops, the Sooners dropped a season opener to Northwestern 24 to zero. Dropped a game to Kansas the same year, 20 to 17, and got that ass beat 69 to seven by Nebraska. Then for 18 years, his teams ran roughshod through the Big 12. Bob Stoops, legend with his College Hall of Fame plaque. There's the athletic director, Joe Castiglione, just to his right. And really had to rebuild Oklahoma after they were in the tank in the mid 90s. He set the school record for wins as a head coach with 190. His teams lost just 48. He made 10 BCS Bowl appearances and won OU seventh national title. In an uncertain world, Stoops' Sooners were certain to be good, if not awesome, each and every year. After 18 years, 13 first round selections, 10 Big 12 titles, a national championship, and one Adrian Peterson, he chose to walk away. But not before leaving the place better than he found it. He orchestrated one of the smoothest transitions from legendary coach to first timer the sport has ever seen. Among a coaching tree that counts Mike Leach, Mike Stoops, Venables, Kevin Sumlin, Kevin Wilson, and Mark Mangino and Josh Heupel, Stoops handpicked 33-year-old Riley to steward the program in time to take advantage of one of OU's most talented teams ever in 2017, senior quarterback Baker Mayfield's team. Stoops knew Mayfield was a jewel, and that was precisely why he wanted to give Riley the reins to the Conestoga quickly. He wanted to do right by Riley, and he didn't want to stunt Riley's first year by riding Mayfield out into retirement. In the Riley era, Sooners sustained excellence stretching Bob's 18 years of winning seasons to 23. Riley won Big 12 titles and developed two number one overall picks and Heisman winners in quarterbacks Mayfield and Kyler Murray. But he never won a CFP semifinal in three appearances. There's little solace in a 10-win season in the land that, to quote Barry Switzer, invented winning. OU has won 10 games or more 19 times over the last 24 years. With each semifinal loss, Oklahoma fans became more impatient to win a playoff game in a sport that had become about making the playoff and winning the national title above all else. But rather than stay in this red clay and stick his hand back down that hole for that CFP catfish to bite his arm until he noodled that SOB, he left for USC. Perhaps Riley felt it was time for him to leave after losing Bedlam in 2021. Leave the place where he had a steady road to championships, consistently recruited well, where the college team is 
the pro team. Leave the place that was ready to build a fifth statue of a head coach alongside Benny Owen, Bud Wilkinson, Barry Switzer, and Stoops next to Heisman Park and memorialize him for all time. Okay, it might be tough for us to swallow all that, but we chew it still. Nothing is forever, nothing is sacred. College football is a business full of businessmen standing on the sideline trying to get ahead of an ax that falls on most. Had he gone to LSU or Florida State, I like to think that's a thing OU fans can make peace with and see. At least LSU and FSU had won national titles within the last decade. But an irrelevant USC? Leave us for them? Felt like a rebuke. And without winning a national title, well, some of us might die still raw. In Norman, Constiglione and the Sooners hadn't participated in a coaching search this century. But the last time Constiglione did, he struck gold. He knew we were anxious about our future. So he called the best that best knew us, who knew OU is what we made it. Bob Stoops sat at a table three wide for a media conference with OU President Joe Harris and Constiglione the day after he acted as interim head coach for Oklahoma in the Alamo Bowl win against Oregon. He assured us not only that this brain trust would find the right coach, but that we are still Dalton at the double deuce in a fist fight. He was forceful, direct, tamped our fears, tempered our anger, buoyed our beliefs. He reminded us when he arrived in 1998 that Oklahoma hadn't put together a winning record in four years and hadn't made a single trip to a bowl game during that time. That just two years later, OU went 13-0 and beat Florida State in the national title game. Congratulations on a perfect season. His attitude reminded us that OU is the 84,000 at six home games a year. Boomer shouted in a quiet place. The OU logo across our chest at an airport. Yes, Riley's departure was jarring, but we'd been through more. When a tornado decimated Moore, Oklahoma in 2013, Bob was there with us in the rubble with a shovel in his hands, helping us dig out. He knows who we are and what we're made of. Constiglione and co got their man, a man whose defense had given Riley fits. In the 2015 Orange Bowl, Venables' Clemson defense held Riley's offense, which averaged 530.2 yards, and 43 and a half points a game to just 378 total yards and 17 points in a resounding win en route to the Tigers' first national title since 1981. Venables earned a reputation for identifying under-recruited, misevaluated players and developing those into stars. When Lincoln left, victory meant Venables. But would Venables take the job? He did not enjoy the constant motion so many coaches put their families through in pursuit of the next job. Unlike Nick Saban, who was an assistant for 10 teams in the first 20 years of his career. But Venables believed this move, the one that became his first head coaching gig ever, just two weeks before he turned 51, was the one to make. Venables, a fire-breathing taskmaster, as fit to lead a Tulsa Tabernacle tent revival as he was to lead the Sooners, chose to go to the place where football is not only a sport, but a birthright. OU football is the iron rod we strike back with when big city folks look down here and have the audacity call our home nowhere. When the Dust Bowl and the Depression tried to break us, we wiped the red dirt from our eyes and joined the rest of this country to protect this land from that paper hanging SOB. And when the fight was finished, we kept winning. 47 straight. 
If you learn nothing else about Oklahoma, know that no tornado, no 100 year flood or tumbling price of oil has been strong enough to pull up those stakes we threw down in the ground. Oklahoma football is a constant in a state constantly belittled and bedraggled by neighbors with an NFL or MLB presence. No matter what else might go on in the world, folks in Oklahoma, Sooners, can point to that program, that team, and no pride. Our hearts are worn on our sleeves, and the head football coach holds each one in his hand. Because of this, Oklahoma isn't a place where you want to win. It's a place where you have to win. That's the untold truth of my home, my team. There's more than 4 million of us here, stakeholders. And on that, we all agree. We came to win. If you like what you've seen, consider subscribing to the number one college football show on YouTube, the Fox Sports app, or wherever you get your podcast.